theological fallacy uh, that you may encounter. It's what's called ad hominem. Uh, that's Latin. It literally translates as to the man. Uh, we usually translate it as to the person. Um, and this is where you're attacking somebody not based on the merits of his or her argument, uh, but rather because of who the person is, uh, which may not have anything to do with the validity of the person's claims. Uh, you do see this a lot in politics, uh, where, for example, uh, one argument in, from the distant past now uh, was uh, Bill Clinton favors universal health care, but he cheats on his wife. Now, cheating on his wife may have something to do with other qualifications of his to be president, but it has nothing to do with the merits of his arguments for or against health care. Uh, so that's one uh, where that's an ad hominem attack. Uh, and in fact, in politics, you see where politicians start to call each other names. Uh, that's another clue. You're dealing with an ad hominem attack where you're getting into name calling instead of looking at the merits of what the other person has to say. Now, related to ad hominem is something called guilt by association. That is a similar, that's a variation on ad hominem where you're assuming because a person is a member of a particular group that that person is going to act a particular way. Um, for example, somebody's in the military and so forth, therefore he can't possibly understand uh, what civilians need or civilian spouses, that kind of thing. And guilt by association also has a very ugly side to it, uh, which is the stereotypes and the discrimination. Uh, for example, uh, deciding that because somebody has dark skin and lives in a lower income neighborhood, that person must be a criminal. Or assuming because somebody is a Muslim, uh, that that person uh, must be a terrorist. Uh, that's guilt by association. And as I said, that's a particularly ugly form of it. Uh, the uh, stereotypes and uh, discrimination. Um, okay, another is, uh, this one has a nice long fancy Latin name that I like. It's called post hoc. Ergo. Propter hoc. And this is also known as false cause. And so what this is, it's, it's assuming that because one thing happened after another thing, the first thing must have caused the second thing. Um, and you'll see this in politics a whole lot. Uh, one of the arguments about the death penalty is when South Dakota reinstated the death penalty, um, the crime rate in South Dakota went down. Um, that is not necessarily saying that the death penalty reinstatement caused the crime rate to go down. There could have been something else that happened at the same time. Uh, for example, maybe the economy improved, so fewer people were committing crimes. Or maybe law enforcement got a whole lot better. And so they were catching people before they got into uh, all the really serious crimes. So we don't know for sure. Uh, advertising uses this one a huge lot, too. Uh, for example, um, there used to be a commercial for close-up toothpaste. And the two guys are talking to each other. And the one guy says to the other, uh, well, I switched to close-up toothpaste. And now the guys are all crazy, or the girls are all crazy about me, pardon me. Uh, and uh, that may or may not be true that the toothpaste caused the girls to suddenly start liking this guy. Uh, for all we know, he started going to the gym and working out, and now he's all buff. And so they all want to date him. Uh, or maybe he just bought a new pickup truck, and they all want to go for a ride with him. So we don't know for sure that the toothpaste is what actually caused the girls to go crazy over him. Um, okay, another one, circular reasoning. Circular reasoning, as its name implies, is going around in circles. 
Uh, what we're looking at is that uh, it's saying A is true because of B, and B is true because of A. And what happens is each of those two things relies on the other for confirmation um, without any outside support for either. Uh, so one example of that would be, uh, we know the Bible is true because it's the word of God, and we know God exists because the Bible says so. And so we have these two uh, assertions that depend on each other for their truth and without any outside support for either of them. Okay, arguing from strength. Arguing from strength is saying, I'm bigger and stronger than you are. Therefore, I am right. Um, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to beat you up. Um, so arguing from strength uh, is, again, ignoring the actual question, ignoring the actual merits of the argument. Um, it's kind of the playground bully, give me your lunch or I'll beat you up. Um, I am right, and if you don't believe I'm right, I'm going to beat you up. Uh, here in Albuquerque, especially now that we no longer have traffic cameras, uh, an example would be uh, the driver of the great, big, huge, gigantic SUV barreling into the intersection. And the argument is, I don't care what color the light is. Uh, I am bigger than you are, and I am going through, so get out of my way. So that's the argument from strength, um, that uh, I am right because I'm bigger and stronger than you are. Um, another one, uh, appeal to pity. This is another one that ignores the real question at hand and tries to appeal to the audience's heartstrings. Um, a classic example of the appeal to pity is the lawyer in the courtroom who stands up and says, <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, surely you cannot find my client guilty of killing his mother and his father. The poor boy is an orphan. So what that is doing is that's appealing to the pity, the poor boy is an orphan, instead of looking at the merits of whether he might have had something to do with the fact that he is now an orphan. Uh, so it's appealing to the emotional uh, facet of things and ignoring the logic and the facts. Uh, this can also go the other way. For example, we had a case in Albuquerque a few years back uh, where the guy was accused of uh, raping and murdering an 11-year-old. and. The argument for the prosecution was, this crime is so absolutely horrible, we need to lock this guy up and throw away the key, uh, without even looking at the actual evidence as to whether or not he did it. And as it turns out, they found out a few years later, uh, there was plenty of evidence that somebody else had done it, he was innocent, uh, he ended up suing the city of Albuquerque and getting multiple million dollars in the settlement. Uh, but appeal to pity is ignoring the facts and just trying to pull at you emotionally, get you by the heartstrings kind of thing. Okay, um, another fallacy is appeal to authority. And in particular, this would be appeal to somebody as an authority who's not really an authority. So when we're talking about an appeal to authority, um, we see this uh, a whole lot in advertising. For example, around President's Day, uh, you see George Washington and Abraham Lincoln uh, plugging a whole bunch of commercial products. Uh, however, I really seriously doubt that George Washington knows much about muscle cars. Uh, so um, I know you, if you're a Mopar fan, that's a, a horrible revelation, but George Washington probably was not an authority on muscle cars. Um, or um, there was once a commercial with Joe Namath. I don't know how many of you would be old enough to know who Joe Namath was. He was a famous football player back in the 60s, early 70s. And he once starred in a commercial for pantyhose. And the question is, well, what does Joe Namath know about pantyhose? Or a more recent example of this would be uh, the one where Paris Hilton uh, is wearing almost nothing and washing a car. And she's advertising cheeseburgers. The question is, 
does Paris Hilton really know anything about cheeseburgers? I mean, look at her figure. She's probably not an authority on cheeseburgers. She probably seldom, if ever, eats a cheeseburger. Uh, she's just in the commercial because she's good-looking and famous, uh, not because she really knows anything about cheeseburgers. And then finally, we have arguing from ignorance. Arguing from ignorance is the argument, well, we haven't seen any proof otherwise. Therefore, this must be true. Um, so, for example, we've never seen proof that UFOs don't exist. Therefore, they must exist. Um, or in politics, a couple of years back here in New Mexico, we had a situation uh, where people were saying, well, we've never seen evidence that Bill Richardson and his cronies took illegal kickbacks. Therefore, they must not have taken such kickbacks. That's arguing from ignorance because we don't have any proof they have taken the kickbacks, but we also don't have any proof that they haven't. So arguing from ignorance is uh, something, if you, if you don't have proof th of, that something is so, or you don't have proof that it isn't so either, uh, you can't make that a solid argument. You need to bring in more evidence to prove conclusively one way or another. So these are logical fallacies. and. Uh, as I've mentioned before, there is a lot of overlap between the different categories. In fact, I even pointed out some of them. Uh, the main thing is when you're reading something and you're looking for the fallacies, um, just to see, hunt down, where is something that's not adding up the way it logically should? And that's your clue that you're looking for a fallacy. So as you're writing, make sure not to do them. As you're reading, watch out for it.